Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the TMNDT Gems of War event in which the Dragon Turtle and Hammerhead are added to the game as well as the new Submerge mechanic. So let's go over them. Hammerhead, pretty uh, lackluster troop, though it is a common after all. Uh, you can use the Arcane Stoics for something like a Justice, a Penguin, or for a Wraith, all three being uh, relatively decent options for the pure blue. As far as the Hammerhead, it is a common. It deals damage to the last enemy, boosted by blue allies, at a 3 times boost ratio, and then double if the enemy is damaged. This is a relatively average amount of damage. Possibly early on in the game, this could be synergized with other things that happen to hit in last slot, which I believe is the core purpose of what it's supposed to be used with. Uh, maybe like with a ferret or a rock worm or something like that, he could possibly be synergized with uh, earlier on in the game. Later in the game, he'll serve basically no purpose. He does have a pretty nice water link for his final trait, but uh, given that he has thick headed and the only thing that thick headed is even protecting is his water link, it's definitely not really uh, that viable of an option as you progress through the game but could be something that newer players may find themselves using. The interesting one though is the Dragon Turtle. Green Reds we would end up using for something like a Dark Maiden earlier on in the game or a Merilith later on uh, to get that nice Fire Link on her. You can also use it for things like Gloomleaf and uh, Krog the Dread if you wanted either of them with Impervious. But this Dragon Turtle is the first troop ever to have the Submerge ability. Uh, this is likely something that will come up a little bit in Merlantis, as well as a few other aquatic related creatures in the future. Essentially what this does is avoids all full AoE effects, so anything that's going to hit every single enemy at once, uh, while a troop has the Submerge ability on it, it will not actually be able to uh, take damage from that full AoE. So for example, if someone uses a Christinex on you, and your, one of your units is submerged, that submerged unit will not take any damage from uh, that cast. So this can be pretty decent against any kind of team that's running an entire team, that's running things that uh, hit your entire uh, team. It's also going to be pretty potent against the double humility Draculus. I haven't been seeing as much of that lately, but uh, if that ever does make a comeback, you can just put a couple submerges on your team and every single one of those submerges would basically be immune. One thing to note is that submerge does last forever uh, with two exclusions. Uh, if it ends up taking a skull, it will uh, break out of submerge, and if it casts an ability, it will break out of submerge. But in this case, this creature creates a submerge from casting its ability. So technically, the only way this creature can possibly leave submerge is either from getting dispelled, from like wisp or something, or from um, taking a skull. Which, if it doesn't, ha if it's not anywhere near first slot, that will basically never happen. So uh, quite protective in its capability. Everything about it's pretty protective. Submerge makes it so it doesn't end up taking damage, has some extra armor that it gains, it gets huge, so more HP, and it has 50% skull reduction, which is a little bit um, worse on this kind of troop, mainly because you wouldn't want to have it up front due to its submerge breaking when it takes a skull, but still everything about it makes it extremely tanky, and it gets a little bit of damage on top of that. Uh, definitely not a extremely outstanding troop, but as the only submerge in the game, it can definitely find itself into some decks either just for fun or messing around with. Uh, anyways, uh, let's get into a couple of the event objectives. We have to go help little Johnny uh, Skullbeard kill a bunch of undead in PvP or Explorer. I have found this to be the easiest just to do in Golvania. Go over to Golvania. Uh, I think every single time I've done this so far, it has had uh, three undead here. Uh, generally, it will be quite a bit as more than half of Golvania is undead, so a uh, pretty high chance that you'll actually find undead here. So uh, probably a lot better than trying to do PvP for once, and we can just simply take that out with any kind of quick explorer team, and as you can see, uh, as easy as that, we get ourselves the three little event gems there. As far as the rewards this week, a uh, pretty decent amount of uh, event keys. Speaking of event keys, it's a really, really good week on all platforms to throw event keys. Uh, for PC and mobile, of course, it is the uh, Blackhawk week, so the most noteworthy drop is the Kraken, which is right over there. Uh, Kraken is currently the strongest Devour option in the game, also has one of the highest possible extra turn potential of any troop, and it's just very, very good overall. It's arguably the best troop 
in the entire game due to its board control that it has, its really high damage output, and having the best devour. And uh, with all the extra turns that it gets with things like wisps and uh, other means of really anything that gives an extra turn, uh, it gets a lot of uh, value out of them. So definitely a really good idea if you don't have at least one. Get yourself a Kraken, maybe even double Kraken to mess around with that. Uh, but definitely get yourself at least one if you haven't already got it. Maybe even get it all the way to Mythic if you want. For console players, you guys have the uh, Dragon Claw week. So you definitely want to go and make sure you get yourself a Dragon Soul if you're on console. I definitely get that. There's also a chance on console that you could get Elema Grim. Do keep in mind on PC and mobile though, there's currently no Mythic within the drop hole, but Kraken alone, even though he's a legend, is basically could be considered a Mythic uh, due to how powerful he actually is. As far as things that are craftable this week, I can actually get over there, uh, wrong tab. In the Soul Forge, there isn't much, though there is one thing that some people may want to go for. Uh, Famine is craftable. As far as all the legends, you can basically just ignore all of them. But uh, out of the Mythics that are currently craftable, it could be a uh, possibility for people to craft Famine. Personally, I would still go with Ferris Ra and keep waiting for that. But uh, I know some people would desperately want a Famine. Uh, he is the best, best uh, it, or depending on how you look at it, he's the best mana drainer in the game. He drains all enemies. Uh, and then he has a boost ratio on that based on two times the amount he drains. And then there's a lot of single target damage to whatever he decides to uh, poke on. Uh, this makes him really, really good at making sure that the enemy can never cast. He also can start to slowly decay them uh, over time with his ability that keeps lowering his stats on the first slot on the enemy team. And he's generally used with a few other mana generators as well as uh, mana dra drainers and generators to make sure that you can keep staying ahead of the mana curve of the enemy. Uh, really potent troop, of relatively slow in battles, but really good at winning is basically what a famine is. It isn't something that you would really run in PvP for the most part, but it's definitely something really good on brown, green, and yellow guild wars, which is one of the reasons why a lot of people probably want to pick him up is for the purpose of using him in Guild Wars. So do keep that in mind. He's available. Uh, probably one of the strongest mythics, if not the strongest mythic, depending on how you look at it. Uh, really good utility to have if you uh, don't have him. Personally, I would still wait for Ferris Ra, but he is an option if you happen to want to get him. Anyways, more events. Uh, what else do we have? We have the 10% for all Blackhawks and 10% for all Dragons, surprisingly. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting, like, Pirates or something. But yeah, we did get the 10% to all Dragons, so we can bring Dragons back. Uh, we just had the event, like, not too long ago. So we got it basically again to have the extra bonus on Dragons. And other than that, some other noteworthy thing is we'll definitely want to use the new Dragon Turtle in PvP. So if you ever wanted to mess with it, now is the time. Because uh, every single time that you win a PvP battle with this guy, uh, you will end up getting an additional trait stone. So let's go show two teams related to that. One will be a quick one trophy wipe. The other one will be a little bit more of a realistic actual team. Uh, personally, I don't think he's, like I mentioned earlier, he's nothing like totally outstanding. It's nice that he has that new uh, mechanic, but as far as his actual potential within a team, uh, it's kind of average. Pretty much just mid-tier as far as what you'd really consider him for anything. Uh, biggest issue I've found with him so far is mainly his uh, lack of value that he really gets, given how defensive he is, um, without really having too many offensive capabilities. But as you can see right there, we do end up getting the double trait stone. It's easy as that. Uh, it doesn't give you two different trait stones, it just gives you two of whatever trait stone you get. And if you don't know what I'm doing, I just keep clicking refresh on this 50 gold, wait until the rating goes very low, and then you take that battle and just kill it real quickly with whatever quick team you want to use. Just make sure that you have the uh, the Dragon Turtle on your team so that you do get the two times trait stones this week. Simple as that, really good way to stock up on trait stones if you've been uh, meaning to do that for a while. So uh, definitely a really good time to go and uh, accumulate them if you've been wanting to get some more and just farming them up. And as you can see right there, oh, there we go. There's the luck. There we go. Let's screenshot that. That's gold. There we go. The double brown purple trade stone. That is pure luck. Uh, we would get it on our second battle. It's about a 3% chance that we would get that drop. I just did a video on arcane trade stones too. That's kind of funny that we would uh, get that. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> there we go. Two good times arcane trade stones. But yeah, great week to try to farm up trade stones. Definitely make sure you go do that. And uh, let's go do an actual battle now against whatever our three trophy is. And here is, of course, I couldn't not do it. Dragons have 10% this week. Four times dragon team. Pretty classic team. Just a Christine X Dragon Soul combo with the spears thrown in between. With the standard Dragon Soul banner of plus two purple, plus one red, minus one yellow. It doesn't really matter if we have the minus one yellow on the Dragonian Monk. Mainly because we'll be able to get all the mana simply from taking uh, other means like explosion and stuff like that. 
So first things first, we're going to just keep uh, poking around. Probably get that Christine X soon. Uh, I kind of want to get Dragon Soul, but we can only get it up with uh, purple, which isn't too big a deal, but it is slightly being blocked by the other thing, so we can get the quicker submerge. Just to make sure if they have quick, quick AoEs that we don't end up getting hit by it. Uh, so right here, we will be able to go for what appears to be a four barrier monk. So we'll go for that. Get our mana cascade to be able to recast him if we need it. And that does give us the last little bit of mana we need to start throwing full AoEs. And of course, uh, with full AoEs, we would actually be really bad if they happened to have had a turtle themselves. Because of course, uh, full AoE when submerged, uh, will not be able to get hit by it. I want to try showing his ability. I didn't actually get to show it yet. Um, I would need to wait for like death to cast or something like that. So we'll go see if we can get that maybe. Let's see. So we'll go to that. Oh my god, it's the first enemy. Now we have submerge. This is what the submerge looks like. It's a little blue like whirlwind, uh, whirlpool looking thing. And uh, now if they do any full AOE ability, he will not be hit by it. So let's go wait until the death casts. And uh, just to go show it real quick. Oh no, I might accidentally kill it. Hmm. <laughs> How do I go about this? Uh, I don't want to accidentally kill it. Though, if I take that skull, that will happen. Let's see. Wow, this is starting to get hard to not kill him. <laughs> Oops, I just killed him. Fail. Uh, well, maybe we'll go do another battle real quick just to go show it. Oh, gosh. How? What just even happened? Stop trying to win. I'm trying to show this emerge. Okay, we'll do one more battle. Okay, all it does is protect him from a full AoE. Oh, there we go. Perfect. An Elma Grim. It will not protect them against Kraken, though I haven't tested if it will protect against the three damage to everything that Kra the, the Kraken does. Oh, we'll go test it right now. Perfect timing. So let's see if it actually does. I didn't test it against that. I would assume so, but I don't know if traits interact a bit differently than what abilities do. Uh, so we'll find out. Go try getting his ability up pretty much immediately. Get ourselves some barriers just to make sure in case it doesn't work. Just so we have some barriers on everyone to help protect them. Uh, can we get a nice... Yeah, we can do it right there. Oh, wait. Oops. I thought that was aligned. Fail. <laughs> well, then. Well, at least we can get the submerge. Get that rolling. And uh, we'll just keep him submerged for pretty much the rest of the battle. Unless the Christinax dies. So he'll be pretty safe there. I can't take the yellow surge because we actually have a minus one yellow. That's going to prevent us from getting full mana right there. Fail. Minus one yellow does come to backfire us right there. So we didn't don't really have immediate need to cast him. It's just he keeps taking all the mana that I need. Uh, let's see. Do we bother with barriers? I don't think so. Let's keep poking our mana. Now would be a time to actually throw this just so we could get the last little bit that we need. So let's just double check wherever we do throw this that we do indeed end up getting uh, three Christine X mana. The so one, two... Yeah, there's plenty of enough right there. Let's just throw it right there. The manas we need. And it does get an extra turn. I did not actually see because it moves so quick if it hit him. I believe it did not. Because his armor is still positive, but then again, so is Christine X's. It might have hit the barrier, because he doesn't have barrier anymore. But I think the tentacle still did hit him. I might need to slow down the speed to actually see if that is actually hitting or not. Let me go slower just a little bit right now. Put it to a two times. Slow motion! <laughs> Everything other than four times feels so slow these days. Look at that. Look at that glacial speed. Yeah, here we go. Don't devour. Please extra turn. I can't believe I'm saying that ever to a Kraken. I want him to, I might deliberately leave that just so we can test it real quick. I'm going to. I can't believe I'm doing this. Does he take damage? Yes, he does. The trade is a lie! Or submerge is a lie. It doesn't work against uh, Kraken's tentacles, even though it technically hits all enemies. It only works on abilities that uh, hit all enemies. It's a lie. <laughs> well, I don't think know if that's intended or not, but that is how it currently interacts. So, uh, if you get tentacled, it will still hit you. But if you get hit by something like, let's say, an Elma Grim, it will not hit you. So, I guess currently it only works on ability-based full AoE damage, not trait-based. Well, that's a slightly unfortunate, because that would be a really good counter to Kraken. Unfortunately, it's not. <laughs> Maybe in the future it will be adjusted to, uh, uh, to actually counter it, but as this current moment, it doesn't. And because of that, Kraken is still powerful. Powerful as it's always been. I wish this gained an extra turn, too. So not everything can gain an extra turn. It's a slow turtle. Why would it gain an extra turn? It would just be more convenient, but it's not needed. Anyways, down it goes. And that's the new turtle. Is it worth using? This week, yes, because two times straight zones. Uh, every other week other than this week, probably not. Uh, maybe as a good early game tank, you could get some exposure. 
Uh, particularly if you're up against stronger players that might be running full AoE, so you could just negate it. Uh, it could be kind of like a mini barrier against that kind of stuff. But uh, for the most part, I don't personally see myself, other than this week, using it that much. Uh, I'm pretty sure future submerged troops will be quite better than it. Generally, the first troop that ever gets added that has a new kind of ability or trade or, you know, kind of anything new, generally tends to be towards the weaker side, and then they add a stronger version later on. And that basically seems like what this is. It's just like a kind of a mid-tier kind of troop, a little bit tanky. Basically covers all the tankiness that you'll need, but doesn't really excel at uh, anything in particular other than that role of tanking. So it's an okay troop. Definitely use it for the trait stones, though, because you can accumulate a lot more, basically twice as much as what you normally would just from using him on your team. And he's not like he's horrible on most teams. He's actually going to be... Uh, quite useful if you need survivability on a team. But anyways, guys, that'll wrap it up for this event. If you still have any other questions about anything, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a wonderful week.